So thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm Johan Rask. I'm here to talk about uh, in our company Insplorion. Let's see if I get this right there. Uh, and in particular, I will talk about hydrogen sensor for an accelerated transition to a sustainable future. Just very brief about our company. Uh, originally a spin-out of Chalmers University of Technology. And the core of our technology is what we call nanoplasmonic sensing. We'll not go deeper into that, but that is uh, an optical phenomenon that we harness to be able to see what happens close or on surfaces. And that is what we use. And in the beginning of the company history, uh, research instruments were created based on this technology, which is a good start. And it's given us a solid platform with more than 125 research applications uh, published by our users. And we still offer research instruments through our distributors, but all our focus goes into our hydrogen sensors. So why hydrogen, you can ask. And Kristen, you can borrow this picture later uh, as well. It's uh, what you see, and I, think, I don't think anyone has missed that hydrogen as an energy carrier will be critical uh, for the future. Uh, and what you see here to the left is uh, from October 2023, Hydrogen Council run by McKinsey, by the way, uh, their collection of what's the status at this moment of the number of projects out there in the world. So as you can see, this is a, this is a global thing. And Chris is absolutely right. This is happening all over the place. And it's everything from production, mobility, infrastructure, industry, etc. Uh, but what's really interesting is the growth rate. Uh, if you compare to only May of that 2023, so from May to October, the number of projects announced were increased by 36%. On an annual basis, that's about 70. Uh, and also the amount of dollars estimated to be invested in all of these projects until 2030 uh, rose by another 30% to a whopping number of $570 billion. And where do we come in in this? Well, everywhere along the whole value chain, you will need sensors from the production to storage, through transportation and use in various different forms and shapes, uh, of course. But why is that? Well, there are a number of things uh, that you know, can challenge the progression of our road to a uh, sustainable future. First one is safety. This whole hydrogen economy, <clears throat> it will not happen if it's not safe. And given that hydrogen is the smallest molecule there is, if you give it the slightest chance to sneak out, it will. And if you mix it up with air, 4% uh, hydrogen, the tiniest spark will create a very big spark, if you put it that way. So safety is critical, uh, and maybe above all. But also, if you think about $570 billion being invested in here, of course you want profitability in the end. And that comes through efficiency. So you want to make sure that you run your processes where you produce or use hydrogen uh, the best possible way, and also with minimum downtime. And that is where sensors can play a, a big role. But what's our reason to win? What do we bring to the table, so to speak? A number of different things in here that are very important. First of all, we are actually specific as a sensor to hydrogen. As I said, it's a small molecule. It's not that easy to measure. And many of the sensors out there, they measure combustible gases. But in certain cases, that can be OK. But you want to know what you're measuring. Second, speed. Particularly when it comes to safety, speed is critical. The fastest we have measured uh, is 0.3 seconds. And the critical thing is actually to switch out the air uh, so the sensor can sense it. So we are really fast. That gets a lot of interest. Another one which is maybe not that uh, evident uh, is that we do not re require oxygen to work. But many sensors actually do that. They work through catalytic uh, reactions, for instance. Uh, but many of the customers that we talk to they want to create an environment around their hydrogen installation that is what we call inert, which could be uh, oxygen-free or at least low on oxygen. But of course, you still want to measure if you have a leak, otherwise you're just moving the problem to another stage. So that's important. The optical readout port is another aspect. 
Since it is an optical method, we can separate the sensor chip from the electronics, which does have a safety uh, feature to it, but also we can measure through fiber optics from a distance, which can be important in applications where you have limited space, such as airplanes, for instance. And there's a flexibility in the platform where we can change coatings, uh, alloys, etc., to tune it for different situations. But what's the sort of the proof of the pudding? There's no point in developing something if nobody wants it. Uh, do we have commercial traction? And yes, we do. These are the commercial deals that we have announced. And in three of these, we are delivering what we call the MPS P1 uh, product, which is our prototype uh, as a leak detector, and delivering that into the power side, the marine side, and the process chemistry. Uh, so that's the MPS P1. Uh, on the aviation deal, uh, it's more the fiber optic capability that is of interest in that. And we do see a lot of interest on this one. Uh, quite often, actually, companies that are developing a hydrogen uh, solution or application, wherever it might be, they look at what's out there in the marketplace, and there are a number of different uh, sensors out there, but they always come to the conclusion, or very often at least, that what's out there is not going to do the job. Uh, what do you guys at Insporion do? And those discussions, of course, are what we then try to pivot into deals like this and then going forward. This is how the MPSP1 looks like. Uh, and what we sell here is a field test ab um, ability. So you can, in, in pilots, in designs, uh, whatever it might be, where you want to look for hydrogen. We've done commercial deliveries, but the next step here is to scale up for larger volumes and create the P2 product, which will also be ATEC certified. And ATEC certification means that it's certified to be uh, uh, situated in explosive environments. And for higher volumes, of course, that is needed. For the initial deals that we do, not so much, but for the higher volumes going forward. So this is the critical part for us. So our strategy then really relies on three pillars. First, and what we do, sell the MPSP1 for projects, validation, pilot, etc. What's important to remember here is that many of these are stepping stones into larger deals going forward. Many of the customers always want to try and see if it fits. We're not so, um, it's not so important for us what the application is at that stage. It can be leak detection or process uh, for that matter. But in parallel, the second pillar to, is to launch the ATEX uh, certified products in Q1 2025. This is high priority for us. The third pillar is partnerships. We want to work through partners. Uh, that's the best way to get fast to the market uh, at scale. And partnerships for us take two forms. Either it's a commercial rollout on the NPS P2, or it can be for certain segments where you want to do a co-development. I mentioned the aviation industry, again, as an example of where that could be. We would never go on our own and develop a product for the aviation industry because we know it's far away, but there's still uh, money in partnerships and interest. Of course, we also have a team to make this happen, and I will not go through all the names, uh, but we have a good mix of, of business, commercial, technical, and product development to make this happen. And, of course, a board as well. Uh, and again, not going through all the names, but they're all experienced to help guide us. Uh, and also, as you can see, we have relevant, very relevant industry experience in there through Maybe in particular through Magnus, the chairman of PowerCell, and Hedvig, who's VP Hydrogen H2 Green Steel. A lot of good input. And, and, you know. So why should you consider owning shares uh, in Insplorion? And I would suggest you own it for a long time, because there's a lot of potential. Hydrogen is a, is a critical part to a sustainable future. Major investors are already going in there and will only continue. It might be one of the biggest mega drives everyone here in this room will see. We continued to an accelerate the transition to this by providing value in every step through that value chain. It is a unique technology which actually addresses real pain points for the products, for the customers. 
We are in commercial phase and we're making that pivot. We already made it from a technology company to a commercial company and now to product and higher volumes company. And of course, there is a solid foundation uh, and a good team to make it happen. Questions? Thank you for that. <coughs> so, um, uh, if I look at the presentation here, I, I can't help but feeling, uh, if we look at the safety aspects, uh, it, it, it seems like a no-brainer. And uh, forgive me my ignorance here, but if you get the ATEX certification, mm. um, uh, why wouldn't um, you know, like all, all the aviation clients be standing there knocking on your door? Maybe not the aviation clients, they need, they need something else uh, with the fiber optics. But many others, uh, particularly you have the marine segment, uh, which is very, very interesting and it's happening. And then of course you can always debate which application area will come first and second and so forth. Uh, and I think the honest truth is that I don't think anyone knows exactly which application will come first. So I just came back from you, as you mentioned. They believe big time in uh, long haul trucking. I think that's a good segment too. But then you have others talking about the electrolysis and so forth and, and all of these different things. The good thing what we do is that we're actually applicable no matter what, in every segment. Safety will always be important. Well, and that, of course, you know, yeah. ATEX approval is it's a license to hunt. Oh, okay. But it's, so, yeah. so the key word here is, is a license to hunt. And, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> um, it, it's, uh, it's a good segue to my next question, uh, which gives you a feeling that we've already rehearsed this, which we haven't. <laughs> but, I mean, you're launching a lot of pilot projects, and you mentioned shipping, aviation, energy, and chemical sectors. What, what would the synergies be? And if not, is there a risk that you are spreading yourself too thin here? Because, I mean, the world is your oyster, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. but... Yeah. Uh, I, I, no, I don't think it's a risk to spread too thin, but uh, because it will be the same product mm. for this one. There will be further you know, product variations in, in the future, uh, absolutely. But for now, it's the same product, slightly different applications from time to time, where you use hydrogen, but safety is still, still critical. Uh, I think where you, will, where you will see a difference is the kind of partnerships that we choose for different sectors. The whole market is quite widespread. You'll find sensors in many, many different segments. Mm -hmm. It will be impossible and maybe also stupid of us to try to build up our own sales force and try to address all of that. So working through partners, like in marine sector, we have this initial partnership with Concilium and then others, it would, uh, th that I think you, where you will see the difference. Mm. And maybe and pricing will be different too, but we'll get to that. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. But, but, uh, but then again, then, if, if we look at the partners here, um, wh what kind of partner is it? it? Would that be a distributor of your products? Or would it be someone that you co-develop something with? Or, or uh, is it the same? I mean, for a the, combination? No, well, it can always be a combination depending on the partners, of course. Of course. But for the MPSP2, it will be more of a commercial relationship. That can be, let's call it a simple distributorship if you want to. We prefer, however, to have more deep relationship in specific segments uh, to, you know, where we can talk about exclusivity and those kind of things. We believe that gives more incentive to the partner to drive sales and invest in building the market. Uh, but of course, in certain areas, you can have a, like a, a general distributor as well. But then we will also see co-development partnerships, but that will be in different applications where we know we have more work to do in order to bring a product for that specific segment to the market. And we want to do that together with partners in select areas. I'm mentioning the aviation again because it's such an obvious area where that would make, would make sense. Mm. And, and if we look at the, <clears throat> the, the employees, sir, uh, do you need to expand in any particular area? To me, it sounds like you perhaps need to boost up the sales, uh, but then again, you need to be able to deliver and yeah, perhaps yeah. Uh, develop, so... I mean, what, I mean, as a part of the whole ATEX uh, approval, a part of that is, is building up a robust supply chain, uh, of course. So adding a little bit of capabilities uh, on that side makes sense. I don't think we need to add a lot on the commercial side, mm -hmm. to be honest. Maybe incremental, of course. But it's not like we want to double the company uh, in one year's time uh, from that perspective. So I think we can run it relatively lean, to be quite honest. And um, uh, your warrant subscription ended yesterday. Yeah. 
Uh, so would you have any news on that or, and would you like to oh, well, elaborate a little, <laughs> a little bit of that capital injection because it goes hand in hand with the development of where yeah, you are yeah. and where you're going? Yeah, I mean, and, uh, absolutely. All of that goes into the three pillars or strategy that I just mentioned, uh, the MPS1 sales, the partnerships uh, and the ATEX approval. Um, it was subscribed to 72 percent which I think in this market was uh, pretty decent mm -hmm. and we also choose like we did in the previous uh, capital raise to use no war, you know, guarantee consortium or anything like that. So the money goes into the company and works there. That mm -hmm. is where we want it. And, and if we look <coughs> at uh, coming back to, to what you deliver to your clients, who finds whom here? You had a slide on, on, on a couple of contracts. Uh, uh, did you find the, uh, the, the uh, well, your client or did the client find you? Uh, it seems like the clients need you. <laughs> Obviously, you need your clients, but yes, you course. get my drift. Yes, I, it is a combination of both. Uh, but I, to be quite, on, quite honest, I'm more used to us, you know, as a company, you search for your customers and clients. In this case, uh, we've had much more incoming interest where they've done their homework and the research and realize, you know, we need something different. Oh, here's this company. You know, you know of course, we should be always be proactive and reach everyone, mm. but there's so many out there. Uh, so, but combination of both, which I'm happy for. Of course, it's good that they find us, they realize we have unique capabilities to solve their needs. Yeah. And, and um, my guess is that if, if you go, go over to the States and you present what you have, uh, the, the, the brand knowledge has, has increased, one could argue. Would one you agree? Could argue. <laughs> well, one could argue. Um, but you know, just coming back from this uh, delegation mm -hmm. with the energy department that you mentioned, uh, and in all the conversations uh, we've had, there's always been, you know, okay, guys, we'll, we'll need those sensors, which is a good expression. There is a need. Uh, and uh, we'll try to capitalize on that, of course, in the US market as well. Mm. And um, then again, looking, looking ahead in 12 months' time, uh, what, what should we expect? What should we look for? More deals, uh, executing the strategy, basically. Mm -hmm. So more sales of MPS P1, partnerships for MPS P2, uh, the progress on the ATEX approval, uh, which, you know, We'll see how we, what we can communicate on that, but it's you know it's already ongoing. Uh, so yeah, you know us executing on what we're saying that we are going to do. So you would expect uh, 2024 to be a very hectic year. It's yeah, well, it was last year as well. I was <laughs> going to say that. But it's so, going to so, continue to be hectic. Yeah. So, so you're <coughs> you're running your shoes there. Mm. Uh, interesting, excellent. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, I think we give you a warm hand. Thank you. <coughs>